As a moderately keen cyclist and a lover of new bike tech, I've often wondered about how the products that we ride, or in fact just dream about riding, actually come into existence. And as well, about the people that are responsible for making those products happen. But today, I actually get to see how it all happens because I'm gonna spend a day with a bike designer. And who knows, maybe I'll even get to design my own bike. Probably not. Anyway, I've come to Canyon, as you've probably guessed, to meet up with one of their product development engineers, a chap called Sebastian Hofer. And has anyone ever told you you look like John Degenkolb? No, you? never actually. You look just like John Degenkolb. Almost blushed. It's bright and early, or at least it's certainly early. Let's go find him. So I guess my first question is a basic one. What actually do you spend your time doing like, in a day? Well, that's a good question. Well, I mean, um, it depends on, on where you are in the product development process, I guess. So if you think about um, designing a new product, you all you start off with the kickoff, with the concept phase, where the, all, the, um, all the, the colleagues that are part of the development process, like let's say an aero guy or me as a lightweight guy, then you got the product management, you got the industrial design, all kind of people get together and think about how to how to make the new product. For the Ultimate, for example, and the Aero, like bikes like these, it's one guy who does it all. And uh, for the Speedmax, for example, it is split up into two guys right now, or has been done for the, 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 the new one. But for Ultimate itself, pretty much yeah. one guy who takes care. Okay, and that's you? Well, in that case, yeah, I was... You're Mr. Ultimate, is that what you're saying? <laughs> um, yeah, let's, let's say. Let's yeah, let's fair say. enough, that's cool. That's a good <laughs> like job it. title. So what are you actually working on right now? I mean, we're looking at a bar and stem. That's right, yeah. Um, currently we are in the last stage of a new um, cockpit bar and stem combination, similar to the H11, the aero cockpit that we already launched for the aero last year. Oh. That is going to be part of new bike and also going to be part of the um, Ultimate Surface X disc that we already showed at the Eurobike last year. Yeah, we showed yeah, a prototype yeah. that is um, was there to show our idea, our concept of a um, hydraulic disc bike. And when it gets to you know real world testing, is there a guy at Canyon that's renowned for falling off a lot? And do you give him bikes to test? Because <laughs> because well, we work with someone that falls off a lot. Yeah. And, you know, he'd, so he'd be quite good for that. He's one who, who knows how to crash things and to make sure. I wouldn't say he knows how to crash things properly, but he, he crashes a lot. Next time you get... Whoa! So given that you design, you know, everything from the frame to the, from the forks to the transition cap to the bar and the stem, how long does it actually take to, to get the idea to production? Well, it takes about two to three years, depending on the complexity of the product, um, of the overall product. But I like to point out that it's not me doing it all by myself. Like I said, we have a team of all kind of specialists. What I did mainly, or in the end, is to bring the whole product into production. And um, since lightweight structures is something that happens after you design the outer shell, um, that's something where I sort of put my main focus in. So how do you concentrate? Normally, it's able to do the backflip stand up again. I don't know what happened today. Maybe he's, he's, he's nervous because he's sitting here. Should we go over to the test lab and destroy that one and see whether it withstands all the uh, goals and requirements that we set up, set up in the beginning? Destroy it? Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. That sounds good. So that's the test lab. The test lab. So this is where bikes come to die. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's where bikes come to die. I like that. Okay, so what you see is um, we have a static, a static uh, test or static tests that are pretty much standard in the industry. If you want to follow this one, so is... so you'll get a prototype and you will say, okay, I'm pretty sure from my draping that the bottom bracket is going to be really stiff. Exactly. And then, but this machine is going to tell you exactly how stiff your bottom bracket right. is. Yeah. So we, what we have as well is we have a fork stiffness over here. So you assemble a fork into that, then put a dumbbell weight on it and measure the deflection with this little one. Another one, this one is for seat posts. What you can do is you can assemble a seat post into, into this clamping mechanism. Then you put a saddle or the saddle dummy onto it uh -huh. and you can apply up to um, 400 kilos Whoa. by uh, turning this little spindle at the back. Should we go into the dynamic test lab? Dynamic testing. Dynamic testing, like the fatigue good. testing, and impact testing, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The stuff that it. really kills the, the, the parts. <laughs> It's like the sound of bikes screaming. This one, as you can see, is the ultimate CFS-like disc. 
And this one is Disc Brake Fatigue, a new disc brake that simulates what happens if you keep on braking over the, the, um, the bike frame's life. So as you can see, it's handlebar fatigue and seat post fatigue test tricks. Yeah. yeah, this one's pretty much the same. It's just um, a setup for the cockpit that we just talked about. This one, this one is a, uh, a test that simulates going to, let's say, Paris-Roubaix or something. Lots of massive uh, cobbles. What you can do is quite interesting. If you put your hands onto the onto the tube, you can feel how it actually how it actually pumps. Okay, it's quite interesting as well. And then you you drop the weight onto it. It's quite impressive. You got quite a big um, deflection of the of the fork. I tell you what, Sebastian, that has been an absolutely fascinating day. My pleasure, Simon. Thank you very much for babysitting me. No worries. Next time you step by, make sure you bring your own handlebar stem combination. You make sure, let's see if it's going to withstand the Canyon standards in a test lab, right? Well, that is very kind of you. I think it's fairly clear that I would make a lousy bike designer. Uh, I, have, I have no clue. But anyway, I have more of a clue now. So yeah, thanks, mate. Appreciate it. Thank you very much for um, stepping by. All right, mate. And look forward to riding that 2018 bike as well. Okay. See you next time. Bye. Cheers. Well, that has been genuinely been an absolutely fascinating day. If you want to see a little bit more behind the scenes content here on GCN, then you could do a lot worse than clicking just up there and you can get through to video looking inside the Movistar team truck. So there's an awful lot of Canyon bikes in there as well. Or if you want to see my own Canyon bike, my presenter bike, click just down there and get through to that. Otherwise, make sure you subscribe to GCN and give this video a like. If nothing else, because I've lost my voice doing it. That's how much, that's how much I give to GCN. <laughs>